In this second part of our MACD tutorial series, we'll take all of the knowledge that we learned in part one, where we broke down the MACD indicator, and we'll apply that to our very first backtester. Now the first backtester we're going to be using is a backtester that's built inside of Thinkorswim, and what we're testing there is simply the up and the down signals. Now if you haven't already seen part one, I'd recommend doing so before continuing on to this video. That's where we break down the MACD indicator in a bit more detail. On a surface level, or for those of you that have seen it but need a quick refresher here, this is what the MACD indicator looks like inside of Thinkorswim. There's really three different outputs that you should be concerned about. The first is the cyan line, that's the MACD value line, which is calculated off of uh, two different EMAs. Now the default value is the 12th EMA subtracted from the 26th EMA, and whatever that difference is, is what is plotted here on the actual cyan line. Now the second line is the average line, which is simply a 9 EMA as the default value of this line. So it gives you a way to compare what is currently happening to what has previously happened. Now the third plot that you should be aware of is the histogram. The histogram is calculated by taking the difference between the value line and the average line. So it's measuring this width right here, and it's plotting that out as a histogram. Now, anytime we have a crossover, that's when the histogram is also crossing above zero. That's when we have these up and these down signals. A cross up is an up signal, a cross down is a bear signal. So that's part of what we're backtesting here. This is an example of an up signal, this is an example of a down signal, but what happens if you treated those as your trading indicators and your sole trading indicators? Buy every time you see one of these arrows, sell that buy position anytime you see a sell arrow, and then reverse that position on that same bar to then play the opposite side. So that's the goal of what we're looking to backtest here. How effective is that as a standalone trading strategy? Now, what I'm hoping this really introduces you to is this idea of a backtesting rabbit hole. We'll go through a few different markets, and that will give you an idea of how similar markets here can have very different PL structures. Same thing with different time frames, and then finally, different settings. Now, there's almost infinite permutations that you can have here, so I think it's important to try and structure backtests that are important for your particular trading style. In this video, we'll go through several different examples of each one of these three different ideas. So hopefully you get an understanding of how you can run these back tests fairly easily across these different verticals. Now, the last thing I'll add is we can leverage the PL histogram inside of Thinkorswim. This is a perk as part of their strategy piece inside of Thinkorswim. That will give us a very quick gauge as to whether or not this idea has a positive or a negative trade expectancy uh, for whatever market time frame setting that you're using. Now with that out of the way, let's dive inside of Thinkorswim and load up the back tester that Thinkorswim already makes available for us. Now let's start first with loading the back tester on our charts. So I'll click the studies icon, navigate to the strategies tab, and here search for MACD strat Double click this to load this on your chart. And this is the built-in Thinkorswim back tester, which allows you to test the up and down signals. Now it's also helpful to load in the MACD indicator. So double click that, make sure your settings line up with what the back tester is using, 12, 26, nine and exponential. And I'll also turn on our breakout signals so we can see the arrows nice and easy. Now I'll click apply. If you don't see this PL histogram down here below, click global strategy settings, this button right here, and make sure this is checked on. I also have my default trade size set to one, which I found makes it easier to ignore the PL numbers, ignore the glamor of that, and focus more on is it a positive number or a negative number, and how has the journey getting to that number looked like. Let's click OK, OK, and start with our first back test. I'm on a daily time frame chart going back five years on a chart of the SPY. Our PL number here is positive, positive 60, but the journey to get there doesn't really look all that fun. You had long periods in which that PL was negative, and this lasted several months. I'm not sure a trader realistically would have continued pursuing this strategy after that period. So, SPY, let's say no. What about QQQ? Same thing, and even a negative PL here. So, a negative story and a negative PL. What about the Dow? 
Dow, same idea here. Negative story, a little positive PL, but nothing really that we would care about. What about, say, Microsoft? Microsoft here, a very deep negative PL number here, and a very negative story. So both sides here, not something we want to replicate. In fact, if anything, we would want to do the inverse of what these signals have been telling you to do. That seems to have been a better strategy inside of Microsoft. What about Apple? A similar symbol here compared to Microsoft, but across the same period, Apple, much better story in a consistently climbing PL graph. This is what we'd like to see. So Apple, out of the five markets we saw here, is the one that looks the most intriguing that we can do a bit deeper dive of. So we looked at five markets. Across the five markets, SPY, QQQ, DIA, Microsoft, Apple. Apple is the one that so far has won. Now let's go through our second parameter that we can control, which is time frame, both in terms of how much historical data we give a particular chart, along with the actual time frame that you might be backtesting. Keep in mind, these are all examples of different things that you can control that I'm trying to show you. It's up to you to pick and choose the ones that align best with your trading style. For example, if you trade something like, say, monthly options, you might not necessarily care about this backtest on a five minute chart, but you might care about, say, something like a one hour time frame chart or maybe even a four hour chart. So pick and choose based off of whatever works for you. I'm here to try and give you a few different examples of each different uh, snippet so you know what all you can control. Now, starting off first with the five year time frame chart inside of Apple, we see the number and we'll use the chart bubbles to make this easy to compare 91.75. So a positive number, nice climbing number. Let's see how the strategy has performed during this bear market. So instead of five years, I'll narrow this down to just one year. So this now starts December, 2021. We can see across this one year period, the PL number still green, but there were periods where that PL number went negative. If we right click, show report, we can see that we had one loss to begin with. We also had a pretty large size loss here, $15.94, and then another back to back loss here, 1186, 838. In fact, it's a wonder that the strategy is positive, and that seems to be on the back of a few nice winners that were in that $27 and $21 range that seemed to be keeping the strategy afloat. So across the one year period inside of Apple, still a positive strategy, but across the five year period, this is the back test that we really like. This gives us a larger view snippet. We know the strategy is working on the daily across the past five years and across even the past one year, the overall PL has still been positive. Let's now zoom in a little bit closer. So instead of the daily time frame, say you're curious about the one hour time frame instead. Maybe you'd like more trade opportunities or you do something like that option scenario. So now instead of expanding the historical data or contracting it, you're controlling the actual time frame and we're zooming in just a little bit. So now we're on the one hour time frame chart and we're going back 180 days. Let's take a look at the PL number here. So PL $48. We expect this to be less compared to the daily time frame, of course. If we right click, take a look at the report here, zoom down. $43.62, a total of 87 trades. And if we zoom across these trades, we have a nice winner here, $16. The losses seem to be much less than the winners there. $8 loss seems to be the biggest one so far. There might be a few more, but this gives you an idea of how you can back test across different time frames and then dive into the actual report here. You also started with a pretty nice gain here yourself. And it gives you an idea of how that PL has fluctuated, but the same story is painted visually for you right here. That's the thing that stands out to me is even on that one hour time frame chart, this strategy has not really given you a lot of heat inside of Apple. So it's a strategy that you mentally, emotionally could replicate, uh, especially when you compare it to some of the other charts that we took a look at. So, so far, We've taken a look at the one hour time frame and the daily time frame. Let's now dive a little bit deeper into this one hour time frame chart. Gives us a few more data points, and I just like the fact that we can see all of this on one chart. Let's now test the last thing that we have control over, which are the actual settings inside of the MACD indicator. Now, there's four different things that we can change here there's the fast length. There's the slow length. This is for whatever moving average you select, along with the actual MACD length for
or the moving average that trails the MACD. So these are four different parameters that you have at your control. Now this gives you an idea of almost the infinite permutations you could have. Let me walk you through just some high level ones that I think might be fun to take a look at. So let's start with the default ones and I'll show you how I change these fairly quickly. So 12, 26, 9 exponential, the number we have on that one hour, 180 day chart, $48. What happens if we change this from 12, 26, 9 to instead adding another 12 years so we make the slow length even slower? Let's change this to 38 and let's leave this at 9 in exponential. What happens then to this PL number? 48 is the number we compare it to. That number went down to 44. So we know so far increasing this length seems to have decreased the PL. Is that a pattern that continues? Let's go up to 50. Okay, 44. That number drops down even lower to 23. So, so far increasing that slow length does not really seem to be something that's helping us out. So let's come back to the 26 length and let's now instead try playing around with our flat, uh, fast length. What happens instead of 12, that number was 48 one more time to reset the bar. What if we come down instead to three here? We uh, make this an even faster length. Now on three, that number drops down to 26. So again, less than the 48, not really something we like. What happens if instead of say this 26, we now change this to eight? Maybe we change both numbers. Let's try and see what happens there. This number climbs up to 34, but still not really as good as the default 12 and 26 settings. And I'd like to state here just for the record, I'm not a fan of tweaking these settings and playing the settings game. I find using the default ones to be the most ideal, but I do find it interesting to test for the most part these broader buckets of more sensitive ideas compared to trying to be, say, on the slower length, a bit more conservative and trying to see where on the pendulum the PL tends to swing. Now, the last setting that we can change here, let's try changing the max D length. So let's use 12, 26, and instead of nine, let's try going to 50 and let's use the 50 simple. Let's see what happens to the PL. The PL here now goes deep negative. So that's not something we'd like to do. I keep clicking the indicator. All right, so 50 simple, not something we'd like to do. What happens instead of say 50 simple, we come down to five exponential. That number uh, seems to have been the highest so far, 52.7994. Now I'll stop playing the settings game there, but it hopefully gives you an idea of how very quickly there in the span of just a few minutes, we back tested a variety of different test uh, settings here. We tested a couple different fast lengths. We tested a couple different slow lengths. We tested a couple different MACD lengths along with a few different moving average types as well. So in one very quick swoop here, we had a MACD strategy that Thinkorswim has already built for us. We were able to go from five different markets, the S&P, QQQ, DIA, Microsoft, Apple, and come all the way down in Apple and get an understanding, a feel for the personality of this as a standalone strategy, these up and down signals inside of Apple, and get a feel for how this strategy is performed on the one hour time frame chart, on the five year, one day time frame chart, and the one year, one day time frame chart as well to get an idea of recency. I hope you found this video to be useful in getting an understanding of how to get your feet wet with backtesting, how to use a built-in backtester to get a better understanding of any market you're trading, especially if you use the MACD on that particular market. And also just start to get your head thinking around all the different things that you can test, tweak, change, along with other filters that you can layer on to try and make this backtester, this basic backtester, a little bit smarter. And that's part of what we'll explore in future videos in the same MACD video series. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.